Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. For the last couple of days, I've shared with you some principles from Mark chapter 11. The first principle shared was the one of triumphal entry. This is the kind of entry that Jesus Christ wants in our lives. He wants to come triumphantly into our lives, and He wants to stay that way. This is the only way in this life that we will have the abundant, fruitful life, is to let Christ dwell and live in our life triumphantly. He not only wants to come triumphantly, but also publicly. We are on display as Christians, whether we cherish it or not. People are watching our lives. The young and the old, the righteous, the wicked, and the not-so-wicked are watching as well. It is important, beloved, that we let Christ have this triumphal entry into our lives so that he might cleanse this temple of ours, so that he might root out and root up all those things that would destroy us and make us ineffective for the sharing of the gospel. Remember, as we read in this chapter 11 about him cursing the fig tree because it had no fruit on it, that is exactly what he wants to do in our lives, curse those things that produce no fruit. Many of us, like the fig tree, we have the appearance of fruit, as I shared earlier this week. But when others get a good close look, we sometimes really are fruitless in certain areas of our lives. You might be saying, oh, I cannot come to Christ. I am not good enough. I have sinned or failed too much, or maybe you've come to Christ in the past, but your praise and love have grown cold before him, and you no longer say to him, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our status as a person does not matter with Jesus. It matters not that you are rich, that you are poor. Jesus wants you. Jesus is looking for a few good men and a few good women who will go all the way with him. Jesus didn't appear to have all the riches of the earth, but they were at his disposal when he needed them. Just as he sent two of his disciples after the colt and told them where it would be and what to say that it would be given to them, shows his all-knowing, his all-possessing, and his all-authority over every human being and creature, and even over nature, like the fig tree that he cursed. So Jesus came humbly as he came triumphantly. He came on a donkey's colt, not considered in high esteem for a king to ride. He came on a colt, which means that it was untamed and rough, probably rude and unmanageable and uncontrollable. In this, Christ showed his dominion over the beast that no man had ridden upon. So many times this is symbolic also of our persons and personalities. We are untamed, rough, rude, fearful, uncontrollable sometimes, and it is with the help of the Lord only that many times we will be tamed and that he, that we let him tame us and make us manageable. Also, I want you to note that this colt was also borrowed. So it matters not about our material wealth or our status of life. Christ the King, while on earth, rode up on a borrowed colt. He went up on the waters in a borrowed boat. He ate the Passover in a borrowed room. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. That I just pray that we would see how fruitless it is to strive after the material when we have everything from our Father at our disposal through prayer and trust in Christ Jesus as King. Christ showed his knowledge of things distant and his power over the wills of men when he sent his disciples after the cult. So, beloved, this proves that Christ can do anything and everything He even knows your thoughts, and this should give you great hope in the fact that this Christ, this Jesus Christ, wants such triumphal entry into your life and my life, and that we humbly say, Come, Lord Jesus, come, Hosanna in the highest. I trust you completely. Remember also that I shared with you yesterday, it's so important 
that you show forgiveness to your brothers and sisters and to those who have wounded and who have hurt you. Jesus wants this triumphal entry into our lives because this is the intimacy that he desires. When we come humbly to him, when we come publicly, letting people know who and in whom we believe, we can come courageously, we can come cheerfully, and we can expect him to answer our prayers because it says that whatever we ask for in prayer, we receive. But many times it is because we have not let Christ come into our lives in the way that he desires to come to clean this temple up. So let him come today, beloved, into your life triumphantly, into your life courageously, and into your life boldly and publicly and cheerfully. What a beautiful thing this Easter season to give our lives to the one who gave his life for us so that he can live in us and through us. In him we live, we move, we have our being. And I pray today that you will be bold in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior and you will find that you will have the faith you need to live by. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.